If you encounter this person on the street, remember to keep your distance because you can never imagine his motive for killing. He is Lalo, the most terrifying assassin of the Mexican cartel Salamanca family, and the only one who can make Gus wear a bulletproof vest 24 hours a day, making him sleepless and uneasy. With Hector, the leader of the Salamanca family, down, and the violent Tuco in prison for assault. The cunning Lalo was sent over to maintain the family's power in the north. When Nacho first met him, he didn't sense the danger of this guy. After a brief conversation, Nacho realized that Lalo was also from the Salamanca family. Nacho knew well that there were no cowards in the Salamanca family, and he also realized that this new guy would be difficult to deal with. Although Lalo appeared to be all smiles on the surface, it was often such people who were the hardest to figure out. Nacho then took Lalo to the nursing home where Hector was staying. At this time, Hector was already paralyzed in a wheelchair. Through a simple conversation, Lalo managed to get a response from Hector's fingers, confirming that Hector's brain could still think. Lalo then told Hector about how he once killed a university professor and his family behind Hector's back and took something as a souvenir. That item was the professor's bell, which Lalo now gave to his uncle as a communication tool. <laughs> It was because of this bell that Hector was nicknamed Tio Ding Ding. The uncle and nephew wanted to continue their deep conversation, but the disabled Hector stopped. Smart Lalo understood his uncle's intention and sent Nacho away. This clearly showed that they did not trust outsiders. The target they discussed this time was their rival, Gus. After saying goodbye to his uncle, Lalo immediately had Nacho take him to meet Gus. Gus who was working, was interrupted by an employee who said that the man who came to make trouble earlier was here again. Since he was here, Gus had to entertain him. Gus first greeted him politely. Lalo then started to talk nonsense seriously, saying he wanted to meet the fried chicken boss. Gus admitted that he was the boss. Then, Lalo, under the pretext of wanting to invest in the fried chicken restaurant, was invited into the office by Gus. Lalo didn't hold back and directly revealed his identity saying that he had admired Gus for many years and knew that Gus had built his empire from scratch. However, Gus didn't want to listen to Lalo's nonsense and politely asked him the purpose of his visit. Lalo said that he was there on behalf of the Salamanca family to thank Gus for saving Hector's life. Gus replied that it was just his instinct to save lives. The cunning Lalo wanted to test Gus's loyalty to the cartel boss, so he deliberately said that Don wanted him to create a feud with the Salamancas. However, Gus was too smart to fall for Lalo's trick. He firmly reiterated his consistent stance to make more money for the boss and obey all of his arrangements. Seeing that Gus didn't take the bait, Lalo said he would be staying in town for a while and would continue coming to eat fried chicken after Lalo left. Gus's face instantly darkened. He knew that Lalo would be difficult to deal with. To find out more about Gus, Lalo asked Nacho to show him the chicken farm. At the same time, Werner, the engineer building Gus's underground factory, had escaped. This was a failure on Mike's part. After analyzing the situation, Mike deduced that Werner had not yet left the city. He then arranged for his men to search in different directions and left one to watch over the remaining workers. Mike knew that Werner would definitely have his wife in Germany wire him the money for his return trip. So Mike directly called the travel remittance office. Upon inquiring about the branch where Werner picked up the money, Mike headed straight for his target. At the remittance office, Mike pretended to be a family member of Werner saying that Werner was diabetic and had early-stage dementia, and now that he was missing, his family was very worried. He also said that Werner had called his sister in Germany for money. Seeing that Mike's story seemed genuine, the staff believed him. Fred revealed that Werner had just left about an hour ago. In order to get more important information, Mike continued to pretend to be pitiful and gained Fred's sympathy. Mike successfully accessed the surveillance footage. From the surveillance video, Mike noticed that Werner, while on the phone, glanced at the advertisement rack nearby but didn't see what vehicle he left in. Meanwhile, Lalo had begun surveilling Gus's chicken farm, seeing them hastily leave in their car. The clever Lalo deduced that something urgent was happening, so he put away his binoculars and continued to follow their car. It turned out that Gus had learned about Werner's escape and was rushing to meet with Mike. Mike showed Gus the engineering guide that Werner had left behind and assured him that Werner was just missing his wife and wouldn't report anything to the authorities. Gus also found out that Werner's wife was already on her way from Germany and would land in Denver in a few hours. Mike could see that Gus had already made up his mind to kill. As soon as they tracked Werner's wife and found Werner, 
it would be time for Werner to meet his end. In order to salvage the situation, Mike offered to find Werner before he saw his wife and take him back to work, saying that the project wouldn't be finished without Werner. Mike is only saying this to save Werner's life. But the boss is Gus and Mike's word is not his and he can only try to salvage the situation. Mike had his men retrieve Werner's last few call records. He attempted to find Werner by tracking down the taxi driver. Then, he called nearby hotels to ask if they had a guest named Werner. Next, Mike retrieved the call records between Werner and his wife, where they mentioned going to a natural hot spring resort. Based on this information, Mike quickly narrowed down a few resort hotels and started calling each one, but what Mike didn't know was that he was already being watched by Lalo Salamanca. What happens when a retired Special Forces soldier is hunted by Mexico's most dangerous assassin? At this moment, Mike was tracking the runaway Werner, unaware that he was being followed by Lalo, who had been tailing Gus. After Mike called and found out Werner's whereabouts, he instinctively felt that he was being followed. To confirm his suspicion, Mike made a sharp turn and noticed that the car behind him followed suit. Mike scoffed. He then took a pack of gum from the glove compartment, unwrapped a piece, and popped it into his mouth. Next, Mike drove into a nearby parking lot, with Lalo's car following closely behind. Once Mike had driven a bit further, Lalo also pulled into the parking lot. Mike parked his car, chewed another piece of gum, spit it out, and sandwiched it between two pieces of paper, flattening it. What Mike did next would leave you astonished. Mike waited for a car preparing to leave the parking lot. As soon as the driver backed out, Mike quickly positioned his car in front of he and drove away. Seeing this, Lalo hurriedly followed. This was exactly what Mike wanted. He inserted his parking ticket into the machine, and as the barrier lifted, he jammed the prepared gum into the slot, causing the machine to malfunction. After Mike drove off, the unfortunate person behind him was stuck at the gate, fearing he might lose his target. Lalo rammed his car through, pushing the car in front out of the way. However, when he reached the intersection, he discovered that Mike had already disappeared. Next, Lalo, armed with a gun, arrived at the travel remittance office. He claimed to be a friend of the old man who had just been there and requested to see the same documents Mike had viewed. Fred suggested that Lalo call his friend and refused his request. However, while Fred took a call, Lalo vanished. Fred looked out at the open ceiling and heard footsteps from above and then Lalo jumped down from the ceiling. Fred was instantly petrified. Using violence, Lalo successfully viewed the surveillance footage and found the records of Werner's wife wiring money to Werner. The poor clerk met his end just like that. Lalo got an idea when he saw the hotel advertisement that Mike had taken from the rack. Soon, Werner, who was lounging by the hotel pool, received a call from Lalo. Cunningly, Lalo pretended to be one of Gus's men. The gullible Werner divulged information about Mike and the underground project. Mike is showing my letter. I explained everything. Uh, no. Michael hasn't shared that with Mr. Fring. The letter has specific instructions. My men will be able to continue a few days without me. The work will go on. Ask Michael. Michael. Michael's very busy and he asked me to speak with you. Do you remember what your instructions were? Certainly. They are to finish clearing the debris, then begin the south wall. That's the south wall? The south wall? Yes. The concrete is standing by, they can stop pouring. It's very straightforward. Uh, Kai will not... Fortunately, Mike arrived in time to stop Werner. Lalo wanted to continue extracting more information about Gus from Werner, but when the line suddenly went silent, he realized that Mike had found Werner. Werner tried to defend his actions, but an angry Mike didn't give him a chance to explain and told him to get dressed and leave with him. That night, Mike took Werner to a deserted area in the suburbs, called Gus to report the situation, and informed him about someone posing as Gus's man to question Werner. Gus said he knew who it was and instructed Mike to keep Werner there and wait. Mike knew Gus intended to kill Werner. He wanted to dissuade Gus, but Gus didn't listen. Mike looked at Werner in the car and then agreed to handle it. Knowing his only option was to ensure Werner had a dignified death, Mike told Werner to get out of the car and asked if he had considered the consequences of escaping. Werner, still unaware of the gravity of the situation, thought Mike was just extremely angry and that everything would be fine once he calmed down. It seemed Mike had been too kind to him. Mike explained that he had no say in the matter. Werner naively asked Mike to take him to see his wife. But Mike said that was impossible. Werner wanted to talk to Gus to explain, but Mike shouted at him. Nothing you can say or do will make anyone trust you again. Mike instructed Werner to call his wife and tell her to turn back. 
adding that she was being watched. Hearing this, Werner finally realized the situation was more serious than he had imagined. He took Mike's phone and made an excuse, telling his wife to turn back and not to come looking for him, but she was already on her way. Werner explained that there was an issue at the work site that the boss insisted he return to resolve, urging his wife to go back home immediately, seeing that he couldn't persuade her. Werner reluctantly yelled at her. Und ich will dich auch überhaupt nicht sehen, Margarete. Ich will dich nicht sehen, ja? Also, fahr zurück, nach Hause, sofort, jetzt! Poor Werner's final goodbye to his wife was in the form of an argument. Now, the only thing he could do for his wife was to ensure her safety. Werner said that if he died and his wife couldn't find him, she would report it to the police. But Mike had already planned for this. Werner's wife would be told that he died in a construction accident, and the rest would be handled by lawyers. Werner understood Mike's difficult position and accepted the harsh reality, ready to face the consequences of his actions. Afterward, Lalo continued to investigate Werner, but no one he questioned knew anything. He also inquired about Mike. Sitting nearby, Nacho remained silent, pretending not to know Mike. However, Lalo was not someone who gave up easily. Based on the information he heard from Werner, he deduced that Gus was working on a mysterious project. Suspicious, Lalo asked Nacho if anything unusual had happened recently. Nacho replied that nothing major happened, just some local junkies complaining about the poor quality of the contraband. Lalo wouldn't overlook any small clues and asked Nacho to take him to investigate. On the scene, Lalo discovered that the contraband had indeed been tampered with. Since the goods were distributed from Gus's chicken farm, Lalo followed the trail back to Gus. Unbeknownst to him, this was a trap set by Gus to address Lalo's suspicions. Gus also called Juan to witness the situation. Knowing that Juan depended on him for money, this financial interest would make Juan side with Gus. Gus says he has a contractor in his legitimate business, the escaped Werner. Due to a moment of carelessness, Werner discovered the contraband. Unable to resist the temptation, he stole two packs and fled only to be later found by his henchman Mike. Gus said he felt ashamed of his actions because instead of confessing, he bought two packs of low-quality contraband locally. This led to Lalo's men inadvertently taking the substandard product, causing the problem with their supply. Faced with Gus's flawless explanation, Lalo couldn't detect any flaws. He then questioned Gus about the project he was working on. Gus didn't avoid the question. Instead, he offered to take them on a tour. Gus had already prepared another project to substantiate his explanation. Gus said he was working on the most advanced chilled food chain in the Southwest, and that the workers working on it were all Werner's men. One stated that Gus had no reason to hide this information, as it would have prevented much trouble. Gus explained it was a misunderstanding. His man, Mike, had noticed they were being followed and didn't know who it was, so he tried to cover up the truth. Lalo recognized Mike who was supervising on site, and requested to greet him. Gus readily had a worker call Mike over, as everything was under his control. Michael, please meet my associate, Eduardo. What a pleasure. I've heard so much about you. Is that right? Oh, yes. I'm gonna get back to it. Thank you, Michael. Wow. That explains everything. I am glad you are satisfied. After Gus explained everything, one insisted that Lalo must cooperate with Gus, leaving no room for negotiation. Though Gus had quickly resolved the crisis, the distrustful Lalo didn't believe him at all. After leaving, one scolded Lalo for his reckless behavior and for killing the travel remittance employee, warning that it could land Lalo in trouble. Lalo, however, showed no remorse for his actions. He knew Hector had killed Gus's boyfriend. And naturally, Gus would hold a grudge against Hector, but Gus was such a successful businessman that the cartel boss and one relied on Gus to make money, which was Gus's only value to the cartel. Hearing this, Lalo couldn't argue further. Outwardly, he aligned himself with the company, but he certainly wouldn't let Gus off easily. With the situation over, Werner's workers are scheduled to return to their home country. Mike reminds them that even though they're only halfway through the project, they're being paid on a per-completion basis. To keep their mouths shut, he arranged different routes for them to leave. Before leaving, Kai couldn't resist remarking that Werner was too weak, which earned him a severe beating from Mike. What Kai didn't know was that if Werner hadn't spoken up for him, Mike would have kicked him out long ago. But Werner's character and ability was still recognized by his man. Like this man, who expressed his dissatisfaction with Mike on his way out. It was worth 50 of you.
Mike felt very helpless he didn't want this to happen, but he was only a wage earner. After arranging for the workers to go home, Mike reported to Gus, assuring him that the workers would stay silent and that the underground project was sealed off. Gus stated that as long as Lala was around, the project couldn't proceed. Mike thought Gus planned to abandon the project, but Gus intended to find a way to get rid of Lalo and then resume construction. During the downtime, Mike would continue to be paid. Getting something for nothing is not a consistent principle of Mike's. Gus insisted it was an advance payment and didn't hold Mike's oversight against him. Gus also arranged for a lawyer to compensate Werner's wife. Mike expressed his displeasure with Gus's decision to kill Werner, wanting to argue, but Gus warned him to watch his tone. I would choose my next words very carefully if I were you. However, Mike didn't back down and angrily retorted, You keep your goddamn retainer. With this, the collaboration between Gus and Mike also came to an end. 